My name is Jesus Rodriguez, uh, which is Jesus. Uh, but you don't want to be called Jesus. No, I like to be called Jesus. In the regiment, they call me Jesus. Okay. Due to the fact that when I went in the service, uh, a lot of the soldiers were from back east and the south, and they didn't know too many Mexicans, and they sure didn't know Jesus. So they, when they saw a letter, when they passed out the mail, they hollered Jesus. So that was me. I, I lived uh, in Los Angeles till I was uh, 17. I uh, attended school uh, locally. Uh, I went to a school, uh, grammar school, which was Alpine School. I went to Custard School. I went to a parochial school. Then I went into junior high school, which was uh, Central Junior High. And then they closed that because of the freeways coming through. And I went to uh, Marshall. I decided to go in the army and get away from school. But once I was in the army, I found out that it was all about school again. <laughs> you have to learn map reading. You have to learn compass. You have to, well, it was all classes. And then I, I, I found out that I had a basic training of 17 weeks. And if I didn't pass the basic training, they would send you home. And I didn't want to come home. So I made it my business to make sure that I passed. And I was kind of short and I was kind of thin. And it made it kind of hard to go through the confidence course, which was the, the PT, you know, where you go on monkey bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these bars were too far. <laughs> and there was a wall that was inclined like this, and you, there was a big hole already from people walking or jumping there. So it was harder for me to get over the top. And uh, uh, it was, uh, I mean, I just made it my point. Wherever, whatever I want to do, I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. 1949, July of 1949. Uh, at the time I asked my mother, uh, I had a plan, I had a plan. I asked my mother uh, that either I could buy a car or go in the service. And my mother said, no, I don't want you to have a car. What Why not? Because girls would hang around. You got a car? You're, you're popular with the girls. Mm -hmm. She says, why don't you buy a motorcycle rather than a car? And, uh, you know, most people would say, not nah, a motorcycle, you'd get killed, you know? But my mother, she, she knew that I liked motorcycles. I'm 80 years old and I still ride a motorcycle. Huh? I have two motorcycles. But anyway, I told, I gave my mother an alternative. Either I get a car or I'm going into service. And she said, I, I don't want you to have a car. So she signed for me to go into service. And uh, I went to Fort Ord, which is up by Salinas, California, Monterey, California, in that area. Mm -hmm. And I was there for 17 weeks. And uh, it was the first time that I was away from home. But uh, I, I really opened my eyes. I really enjoyed it. When did you leave for Korea? After my 17 weeks, uh, when I joined the army, I, I made it a point to tell them that, that I would join, I would sign if they would send me to Japan. I want to go to Japan. And they said, no problem, no problem. So after my 17 weeks, I, was, they, I got on a ferry, the ferry went to Oakland, they had a ship there, they filled it up with soldiers, and uh, they pointed it towards Japan. When was that? And th that was in uh, November of 49. 
Ok. <clears throat> uh, and the way... To what, did you, what did you know about Japan? Why did you want to, want to go to Japan? Because some of my neighbors have been in the army and come back and they, they, they said, that's the place you want to go. Why? Because you don't want to go to Alaska, huh? you, you know, or you don't want to go to Europe where it's all messed up. Why not? Hmm? Because of the war? The war, and besides, I, where I grew up, there was a lot of Japanese, there was Italians, there was Germans, there was Slavs, there was Chinese, and that's by Chinatown here. And little Tokyo was down here. Yeah. And I lived up the street, up on Sunset. So I got along pretty good with the Japanese, so I thought I'd Japan okay. would be. So we were out on the ship, and all of a sudden the intercom comes up, you know, hear this, hear this. We're, we're having a problem. There's a typhoon coming up. He said, but we have everything under control. What we're going to do is change our destination and we'll outrun it. And that was a bunch of bullshit. You don't outrun a typhoon. Typhoons are bad. I know. I mean, so the weather started to change real fast. And on the ship, they had these portholes where you look out. Well, I had a, my bunk uh, was a hammock. And I started to notice that the ship would go down, then the ocean would come up, 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 and then bang, and then it'd go the other way, then the, you go, and then the ship was going up like that, and whoosh, the ship, you know, almost come out of the water. I said, what the hell's going on? I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die before I... I get to where I'm going, you know. <laughs> I mean, you may laugh, but at that time, it was serious. Then all of a sudden, I heard, Ugh! oh, God. <laughs> then everybody, everybody started to get seasick. Being sent to Okinawa, they, they did me a favor because this regiment was spit and polish. I mean, you, you soldier, and you learned your trade, and my trade was to learn how to kill. After that, I, 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 I was learning the ropes around there, you know, I was getting out of a lot of work, and, and the, uh, the captain who was in charge, the company commander, he knew who all the screw-ups were, and he knew who the soldiers were. So one day they called me to go to the orderly room and the first sergeant says, uh, Jesus, you've been selected to go to leadership school. And I told him, I don't want to go to leadership school. Why not? Because that was more school. Mm -hmm. So um, I said, uh, he said, well, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, you're going. So I said, all right. So then they take me to a place called Nago, which was off limits and was out in the booms. And that involved learning more about war. It was, you, you learned to, uh, to direct fire. You had a, f a fire team, a machine gun. You say, you, you were in charge, you were the gunner. You say, direction of fire to your front, gun to be mounted here, you know, and just give all the commands and then they had a demerit system there. If you got 125 demerits out, back to your company, they didn't want you. The first week I managed to get 75 because I didn't want to be there. So I, they brought me back to the company on the weekend and then uh, I had to go back on Monday. And uh, this guy came up to me and he says, hey, the company commander wants to see you. His name was Captain Stewart. And Captain Stewart used to be the lightweight boxing champion of Fort Benning mm -hmm. in those days. And that was, he was tall, lean, and a mean machine. So he, he uh, I reported to him, sir, reported his order. And he says, uh, how are you doing, Jesus? I said, oh, 
I'm doing real good. I should be back next week. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I got 75 demerits. And he, he was smiling and all of a sudden he, his face just went, he said, you son of a bitch. You're representing this company and that's me. You better not get thrown, you better not, you better pass or your ass belongs to me. That means if I come back, he really make it hard on me. So I went back and there was the, 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 the guy that was in charge, his name was Sergeant Hart. And I went up there and knocked on his door at night. And I said, Sergeant Hart, I, I know that uh, I've been trying to get out of this, but it's a matter of life and death. I'm going to turn it around. I passed that leadership school. Good. Then, about that time, we got a notice that the Korean War started. Hmm. So, when did you leave for Korea? We left for Korea around July 15th, I think, something like that. We left at, we left at, at, at nine at night and uh, we weren't prepared, but I remember that we drew our rifles, ammunition, and a sea ration, and we were marched that night to uh, Naha, and not being prepared, they brought in a ship from Japan. It was an old Japanese ship that was used to bring back prisoners from Manchuria, from Korea. Did you know anything about Korea before? No, 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 no. And we were out there in the ocean and all of a sudden these two minesweepers come by next to us. One was a British and one was American. Hmm. And just like in those John Wayne movies, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, ooh, 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 boom, they start throwing depth charges. They got a submarine. It must have been a Russian submarine. So then I said to myself, hey, I could get hurt, I could get killed. And uh, we were supposed to train there for a few weeks, but things were so bad that they, they got my unit and attached it to the 19th Regiment of the 24th Division. And then you were shipped to where? From there, from Pusan, uh -huh. we made our way up to uh, Jinju. Oh, okay. Jinju. And uh, there's where we got it. We were supposed to make our way up as far up as to Taejong, but General Dean had already, in Osan, they, they, had, uh, they were ambushed and yeah. they had a lot of problems and General Dean got captured. Even though I'm 80 years old now, I still keep in touch with my regiment at Fort Benning. I used to go to a reunion every two years, but now I'm the regiment. Mm -hmm. That's all that's left. Very few. But my battalion in Anui, uh, C Company, got attacked and they were just about wiped out, except for the company commander and a couple of other guys. So then all of a sudden we were surrounded. And uh, what we would do is we'd dig foxholes yeah. in the daytime and let the North Koreans come and they would scout us out and lay out our positions and then at night they hit us. Yeah. But what we did was we'd walk away at night and when they attacked we weren't there. <laughs> so we walked for about three nights till we got down to the Nectan River, down by a, a town called Nectan, uh, yeah, Hema. 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 Yeah. Hemi. Could be. Hemi. Hemi. Yeah. And uh, that was by the Nectan River. Mm -hmm. And then we, f we fought there, uh, Till they had the Incheon landing. How was it? How was that battle in the Napcom around Hemi? Oh, till August, from July, August, 
when did they have the Incheon landing in September? Mm-hmm. We fought a couple of months there, just How every day, it? every day. They Describe it to me. Typical day. A typical day was... A typical day we were getting our ass kicked, okay? But uh, they would tell us that we had to send out patrols to keep them off balance, which was a bunch of bullshit. If, if they told you you were going on patrol, it may be a one-way trip because they wanted you to go out and make contact, then come back. If you made contact, they probably would see you first and wipe you out. So sometimes they send you to go get a prisoner. I went on one and I, I uh, what happened was uh, we got in a firefight and we ran out of ammunition, so we came back. And on the way back, we're coming around this mountain and these Koreans, were co- North Koreans were coming and we bumped into them and I pulled out my 45 and they surrendered. My 45 was empty, <laughs> but they didn't know, so we, we, and we took the prisoners back. And they were there for interrogation and what have you, but uh, the fighting was so fierce it, it, it came down to, to uh, you, you're down to an animal stage. I mean, uh, sometimes they'd get so close that you couldn't reload fast enough, you'd hit them with your rifle or grab them and stab them and they would try to kill you. You did that too? Oh yeah. That close? Huh? That close with the North Koreans? There's a picture there where I'm getting the Silver Star that you have to read the story. Mm-hmm. How I had to fight Tell them. me. Huh? Tell me about that now. You want to know about that? Yeah. Well, we have... Where was it in the... Did you get... Mm-hmm. Where did you get injury or did you... What happened? How did you end up getting Silver Star? Okay, uh, this is not bullshit, this is all documented, okay? And now you can see the picture, yeah. read the citation. Yeah. We were on this mountain. And, and was it around Nakto? No, no, this no. was further up. And I where, th- where? Oh, it's, I don't know what's on the picture. No, not that one. Oh, okay, later. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're on this mountain, and usually at, at night, uh, you, you, you get up on the highest mountain because you want, you want to look down at people. You don't want to look up at the enemy, you want to look down. And uh, it was dark, maybe, maybe one o'clock in the morning. When? At night. No, 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 what day? What day? What day? Or date, that's on that picture, I don't remember the date. But uh, we started to, we, we started to uh, see sil- silhouettes out there, you know. The moon behind, you could see people moving around. And the guys in the platoon got scared and they ran. And they left me in the hole, I was in a hole. So all of a sudden I noticed nobody there and I see these people moving around there. And everybody went down except for the interpreter. The interpreter was a South Korean. Mm -hmm. He walked out on a finger and was talking to the North Koreans. So then he turns around and he's showing them how to come in. Okay? He's bringing North Koreans? Yeah, the South Koreans showing them how to come in. Oh. So, uh, I fired and I hit him first. And I hit him in the leg. He spun around. You mean the translator? Yeah. He spun around and fell in the finger in, in the gully on the, a finger that comes up to the ridge. So then these North Koreans started to come in and they tied a white little piece of cloth on their arm to distinguish themselves, you know, so they wouldn't shoot each other. And uh, 
the firefight started. And, and the, the one thing about it was there was a lot of them and just one of me. So it was very confusing for them to find me because I jumped from one hole to another and shoot one and then they turn around and you know and it was pitch black. So that Korean translator was North Korean spy? I don't know what he was but who knows maybe it was a chance for him to save his life or whatever. So uh, the phone rang we had those boxes that you crank and the wires go down to the CP and uh, I answered the phone and it was my platoon leader and he said what's the situation I said uh, the, the, the enemy's attacking and uh, everybody ran off and I'm here by myself so he tells me you stay there at all costs we're gonna counter attack we'll be up there right now you hold on that was one o'clock in the morning it was six in the morning, six in the morning, and they still hadn't come up, and it was foggy. And all that time that it was dark, I was fighting with the North Koreans. Uh, when it uh, got light, they retreated, they, they left. But during the firefight, uh, they were throwing hand grenades. I took off my cartridge belt, put it on top of uh, my uh, foxhole to keep them from rolling in in the hole. I was doing all kinds of crazy things. Uh, so you were left alone by alone, them? alone, and dealing with this North Korean soldiers. Y yes. How many? A pl platoon or whatever it was, a bunch of them. And uh, one time. Uh, this this uh, North Korean, I caught him face to face, you know, like like you and I. Wow. Maybe a little further back, and he puts out his bayonet, his rifle with a bayonet, you know, and I put mine too, but I pulled the trigger, you know, and whatever works, you know. Another guy shot at me and shot right in between my. I had a coat right between my legs, right there. Wow. Another guy got so close that he caught me, I couldn't load. I swung my rifle and the butt hit him right here and I just heard <laughs> and he just kneeled in front of me and I knew he was dead. Mm -hmm. So when it got light, the platoon comes back, you know, and a friend of mine, uh, he passed away last year he told me, Jeff, you look like a ghost. You look like a ghost. You're white, white, just your clothes were all messed up. And, and the platoon leader, the officer tells me, uh, you have to go to the aid station. What is that? You have to go to the aid station. Oh, okay. And I said, what for? He says, you gotta go for observation. Observation? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm not crazy. Crazy is when you have a, you know, they got to watch you, see what you. I said, I'm not crazy. He said, Well, you know what, Jesus? I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. And the other thing is, that rifle you have, you have to give it up right now. You have to give it up. We don't want you to have a weapon right now. Why? They thought I was crazy. Because you were there left alone for yeah. five hours? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he said, they, are, they, th they all thought I was dead, but I surprised him when I was still there. So I said, okay, okay, I'll go. I said, but I gotta do something. So I walked out there again, out in front, and I knew he was there. And I looked to my left and there he was, the interpreter. Oh, still alive? Oh, I shot him in the leg. Yeah. And when he saw me, he had a smile from here to here. He smiled. Why? Huh? Why? Because he thought, you know, he was saved. But then I... I shot him in the head. 
blew his head off. Then I came back and the officer said, what did you do? I said, I fed him his breakfast and I went to the aid station. They didn't say anything to me because that guy caused me a lot of trouble. Hmm. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it sounds like a bad story, but it's the truth. Yeah. So how did you get recognized with the silver stuff? Because I held a position all night. Had they had come down, they would have come down in the CP, which was the company headquarters, all the officers, you know, it didn't happen. But it very well could have happened. Mm -hmm. Had they, if they weren't going to come up and stay on the ridge, they were going to come down and keep on going. Mm -hmm. So, rather than to, to keep me quiet, they gave me the silver star, you know, to, to they recognize that uh, I had done something. People ask, well, weren't you scared? I was scared all the time. Did you pray? I, did I pray? I didn't pray. I used to talk to God. And then the other thing was the elements. I got full of lice, straw lice, and I was scratching. I go, oh my God, what is it? Finally, I took off my shirt and I looked, and it was all full of lice. I threw the shirt in the, in the fire and I'd rather go cold and be scratching. I got malaria. Oh, in Korea? Yeah, oh. I got malaria. I got yellow jaundice. Yeah. Yellow jaundice. Yep. I got frostbite. I got a little bit of everything that that uh, could be had over there. Then I got I got wounded. I got wounded at the Iron Triangle, and. Uh, the Chinese were supposed to make their spring offensive and uh, we knew they were coming. So uh, we started fighting, then we had to, the Chinese were pushing us back. So we were retreating and uh, I was next to a tank and a 120 motor round came in. That was a big mother. And I was the closest one to the motor round, but the ones that were further back, uh, they got killed. And uh, I got a piece of shrapnel in, in my leg. So you were injured, right? Yes. And then you went back to... I went to Japan, I was in the hospital, then I went back to Korea. Oh, yeah. Why? Most of the case, you are... They needed soldiers, they needed... They needed people to fight. So what did you, what did you think about it? I mean, you. I didn't want to go back. That was that was my job. The other thing you have to remember that I wasn't drafted. I was volunteer. I was an RA. Uh huh. So you can't complain about anything. You give your life to the government for the duration of your enlistment. So you have no complaints. When did you leave Korea? I think I left around July. July 51? Yeah. Where did you go? I came back and I was stationed at Camp Stoneman for mm -hmm. one year. And then uh, I got out on a Thursday, went for an interview for a job on a Friday, went to work on a Monday, and retired 49 years later. Oh, so you were continued to serve in the army. I worked for this outfit for 49 years. Mm. I got the most menial job that they had at that? the bottom. In the last 20 years, I was a plant manager. What is that? I was a plant manager. Plant manager. Okay. Yeah. Have you been back to Korea? I've been back to Korea. I was, I live in La Habra. La Habra is the sister city to Seoul. Oh. So three years ago for Veterans Day, I was in a function and the mayor from Seoul came and brought a chorus. 
I think there were like 47 ladies that sang. Mm -hmm. And I was in my uniform. And uh, he noticed me and he sent an interpreter over. He wanted to meet me. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, uh, when was I in Korea? And I told him, and he said, well, where were you in Korea? I said, well, I started in Busan. I went to Chinju. I was in at the Chinju Pass. I went to Su uh, uh, Taejon. I went to Suwon. Uh, I fought in Yongdampo. I went fought in Seoul. Crossed into North Korea, up towards Pyongyang, up to Manchuria. He says, well, I'm impressed. He says, if I invite you to come to Korea, would you come? So when you go back, what did you feel? What did I feel? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I felt real good because uh, nobody was shooting at me. <laughs> But other than that, I was surprised. Uh, I remember standing on the Han River when it froze over. And it doesn't freeze anymore because of all the buildings, all the, the, the high rises. And when I was when I left, everything was flat. I mean, everything was... Young Dung Po, there was a tower there that... Uh, there was a water tower or something, then there was a brewery there. But now it's all subways, trains, uh, freeways. They took me down to the Naval Academy. I met the Admiral who was in charge of the Naval. He gave me a belt. They gave me, everywhere I went, they gave me a gift. They gave me a, a pair of boots. I didn't need boots, but they wanted me to have a pair of officer's boots. Uh, flowers. Oh, I've never seen so many flowers in my life. Oh, my other surprise was how many Christians there is in Korea now. All the churches. Yeah, one third of the whole population. Yeah. yeah. So that was surprising to me and it touched me here, you know. And uh, I visited all these churches and they were happy to see me and everybody had a gift for me. Whether it was just a little washcloth that was handmade, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. whether it was uh, a fan or whatever, something menial. Yeah. But it was touching, you know. What can I tell you? Yeah. And then I went back again. About, about last month, for a week, and uh, they paid for everything. I stayed at the Plaza in the Plaza uh, Hotel in Seoul. Yeah. They gave me $500 spending money, gave me a brand new leather wallet to put it in, gave me a watch, and everybody hugged me and thanked me. and. Uh, I was there for a ceremony, and there was people from uh, Turkey, uh, India, the Netherlands, Canada, but I represented uh, the United States. I took four more veterans with me mm -hmm. that I chose. Mm -hmm. so. What do you think is the legacy of Korean War and Korean War veterans? The legacy? Yeah. What do you mean by legacy? Meaning, what, what is the role that they play then? What the is, role why is it important? What do they do for Korea? They save the, the, save the country. And that's why the people are so appreciate. You know, I, uh, there's a gentleman that comes every year. He's, he's, he must be a millionaire in Korea. He, he has a fish business. And every year he comes and he takes us to dinner. At, uh, Korea mm -hmm. restaurant here now, and close here. And he tells us the reason he does it because we saved this country. Yeah. And uh, any message to the young generation about your service or any other comments that you want to make well, to this interview? I think that, uh, I think, uh, we should learn from other countries that an education means a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't want to raise a bunch of dummies. You want, you want, I know that there's kids in Korea that go to school for many, many hours. Yep. In Japan, it's the same thing. School comes first, you know. And I think that a lot of, I think a lot of them sh should have a religious background, whatever it is. There's no religion that tells you, mm -hmm. shows you something bad, you know. Uh, I hope 
I hope to go back to Korea one more time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I was awarded my guide on, which is a flag that you march with in front of your company when you have parades. Yeah. And the regiment gave me another one to take to Korea, mm. to put someplace that I thought would be suited for it. So the first time I went to Korea, I took it, but I I, I didn't find a place that I I could say I could leave it. Mm-hmm. So I brought it back home and I had it at home. Then when I got invited this last time, I took it again. And it happened that I visited the war museum in Seoul. Yeah. And I said, this is where it's mm-hmm. going to find a home. So I talked to one of the uh, people in charge there and I told him what it was about. And he said, yes, he would put it in, in the museum. And then I took a picture with him and the, the guide on. So I'm pretty active in, I have an army jeep, mm-hmm. an old army jeep like the one we have in Korea. Mm-hmm. And Sunday, it's going to be at the uh, center in La Habra and I'll be there in my uniform for a festivity. I, I, I don't want to forget about being a veteran. I don't want to forget about not only that we do it for Korea, but we, at the same time we did it for our own country, mm-hmm. yep. you know, and it, it's, uh, I'm proud that I have fought in the war and I, would I do it over again? Yes, I would do it over again.